amphibian habitat. It's good for tree frogs. They're very rare nowadays because they don't have any old rotten trees to catch water. And they can't just be raised in a pond because fish eat them. So they need to have a crotch in a tree that still collects water. What I've done is I've put this duckweed on here um, and it's spread. I've had these for years. And this is Salvinia. But in here, there are many cycles of tree frogs developing of different varieties. Lots and lots of them too. There's a tree frog tadpole. They're in there. And they don't need to be fed. They eat the mosquito larvas. As you can see, there's no mosquito larvas, and if there ever is, they are eaten. There are. The mosquitoes lay eggs every night and in the summer. And when they hatch, of course, the tree frog tadpoles eat them. But I move this duckweed around, and when they really get to a certain point, the tadpoles start eating the duckweed. She don't have to have duckweed. I just recently put that in there this year. Most years I don't do it. But that's just one area. Got other areas. <clears throat> I have this great big one. And I always remember one thing, make sure they can climb out. That's why I have this ladder in here. But any bucket works, just make sure there's lots of places to climb out. You see that tadpole, right? Well, there's tadpoles. Sometimes it's just covered in tadpoles. But this is why I have so many tree frogs. Because I have all these little tree frog habitats for each type of tree frog to live. And I keep them along a fence line where no one can see them. But there's, there's tree frogs growing in these all summer, spring and fall. And no mosquitoes. And I really like doing this. I think it's really good and everybody ought to do it. Just make sure you don't leave your buckets where you know things can fall and drown in them. Make sure that the, they're kept full and the rain's been doing that. Or make sure you put sticks in there. I always put sticks in them when the water level's not up because anything can drown in them. You don't want anything drowning. And uh, see, I've got a lot of them. But they are full of tadpoles. Sometimes you can't even see the top because there'll be a cycle of tadpoles so thick. But all year round, there's, I mean, pretty much all summer, there's going to be tadpoles in here all summer but that's not very many there's very few right now but they're in all the buckets every bucket's got them without those there'd be no there'd just be no um, no habitat for them yes I do live on a creek but in the creek it dries up in the summer and when they're breeding most there's nothing there for them to live in and of course, there's fish in the creek, snakes in the creek, birds in the creek that would eat them, crayfish, all kinds of things. And this way they're safe, and many of our amphibians are very rare. We've even had some of them go extinct. I think the golden toad. Here's another tadpole habitat. See how I got these sticks in here so they can climb out if anything gets in there. And they're in here year round. And see right here, you can see that there's tadpoles. Well, I don't know if you saw that. There's tadpoles in here. You see them? One next to the rim there. Anyway, they eat the mosquito larvas, and that's what they live on. They grow real fast. They also eat some of the algae and plants that grow on the side. So, when they're young, they seem to be omnivorous. That's all I know about. Something I uh, want you to do if you like frogs a lot. Make sure you put some buckets out for them to breed in. Make sure you put sticks in there so they can get out. And also, um, doesn't matter whether you keep them in shade or sun, they do just as well.
probably better in the sun because it seems like mosquitoes like to be in the shade more and well there's enough of them already I don't have any problem with mosquitoes breeding in these because I have so many tree frogs that they eat them many many varieties of tree frogs all colors sizes different sounds they make they're pretty neat